Luma AI just released their newest video model, Ray 3, and it's their most advanced yet. I've been testing it over the past few days, and what stood out to me the most is just how much more control you get compared to earlier versions. But the biggest upgrade here is the new native HDR mode, which now lets you create videos with brighter highlights, deeper shadows, and a level of detail that feels much closer to a professional camera. On top of that, text-to-video, image-to-video, and other features all got major updates, with better consistency and much more flexibility. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through everything that's new inside Ray 3, show you some of the best examples so far and also generate a few clips live so you can see exactly how it works. And I want to give a special thanks to Luma AI for sponsoring this video. So there are a couple of key updates that Luma AI have added with their newest model, Ray 3. And the biggest one is the new HDR videos. What that basically means is you now get much better brightness and detail. Ray 3 can make videos with way more contrast, so the bright parts pop and the dark areas feel deeper without losing detail in those extreme areas. So now the bright areas actually pop and the dark parts finally feel like real deep blacks instead of that flat gray look you'd get before. And what that does is it makes your videos look way more cinematic, more visually pleasing, and honestly just way closer to what a pro camera would actually capture. This is huge because the old model with SDR always gave videos a kind of plain TV-like look, but HDR changes that completely, giving your videos that professional, cinematic, high-quality feel that looks straight out of a movie. And we'll take a closer look at that difference later on in the video. Now, another really cool thing is you can actually turn your old clips into HDR. So if you've got older footage that lacks in color and quality, Ray 3 can basically rebuild it and add back in all the missing details. What that means is it can take a video that feels kind of lifeless and make it look alive again with stronger colors and more detail. So you can bring old clips up to modern quality without having to redo anything. And one of my favorite new features is that now you can set both a starting clip and an ending clip for your videos. So you can tell the AI exactly where to start and where to finish. And that just makes the videos flow a lot smoother. It lets you do transitions, little story bits, create loops, and it gives you way more control over what the final video looks like. On top of that, Ray 3 is just way better at following prompts now because of the improved prompt adherence. The old version sometimes kind of ignored what you typed and went off in its own creative direction. It stays consistent with your prompt, whether you write something really short for quick ideas or a longer, more detailed prompt when you want something super specific. That makes it a lot more reliable to use. And the last big update is that Ray 3 now supports longer clips. So if you've got a short clip you want to extend, you can make it longer without the AI messing up the quality or making it look weird. That means you can do extended shots for edits or even just full regenerated scenes that keep the same look and feel all the way through. So Ray 3 has had a ton of really important updates. And now let's actually take a look at some of the videos you can make with the newest model from Luma AI. Now, looking at our first video, what I call a fabric woman, I'm gonna instantly say that this shows us just how good the new model is at working with more complex materials. I mean, you can see how naturally and just visually pleasing all the ripples and the flowing of the fabric look. Not only does it look realistic, but the colors actually pop way more. It looks very pleasing to watch, and that's mainly because of the new HDR edition. The movement of the woman's hands and head in the video is also very nicely done. There's no morphing and no limbs turning unreasonably. The next video I wanted to bring up was this showcase of the SDR versus HDR generation. And as you can see in the video, it really shows just how much of a difference HDR makes. The overall aesthetic of the whole generation just looks completely different. All the colors fill up with a lot more depth. It just instantly brings everything up and makes it look way better. Here I have a video of a record spinning, and the same kind of thing goes here as well. The colors do indeed look much better. But not only that, the visual aspect of the record spinning under the needle, the subtle reflections on the glossy surface, the tiny dust particles catching the light, and the gentle vibration of the grooves all come together beautifully. These details definitely add a lot to the overall generation, making it feel rich, cinematic, and alive. It looks very good. I'd say this is also a nice, strong result that really shows just how much the new model has progressed in terms of quality. Here I also have this video of a car. It also has a very good depth of colors, as well as a very realistic generation overall. The car is naturally pulling forward, the tiny particles are following behind, and the camera is tracking it very accurately. Then there's this generation of a futuristic soldier. And what I instantly noticed here is just how accurate the light on his weird helmet looks. Even though the helmet is completely unreal, the AI nails how the sunlight falls on it, and it makes for a really good quality generation. Same with the puffy material around him, it looks very realistic. The character himself stays consistent too. His face stays the same even while he's saying something. His eyes have a lot of depth. The only thing I felt was missing was a bit more depth in the skin 
skin, but besides that, it's a very, very solid generation. Now, one of the most impressive generations I've come across with this new model is this rainy fight scene. It honestly looks like something out of a 2000s or 90s movie where the bad guy is about to enter a fight. And when I first looked at it, I didn't even think it was AI generated at all. Mainly because of just how deep the dark colors look, the HDR lighting, the way the rain hits the character, he looks drenched. It all just feels real. The character is extremely consistent throughout, from the camera movement all the way to the final punch. And I really love the effect, how it starts faster and then slows down. The sweat flying off the character looks natural. Overall, the movement, the slow motion effect, the ripples, it's all very accurate, and it really shows off what the new model can do. And for the final generation, I wanted to show these two scenes of basically the same thing, a canyon and a gap in the snow. And because of HDR, they both come out very different. So if we look at the deserted canyon, it looks grim, dark, and very harsh. But then if we switch over to the snowy scene, it looks looks completely different, and that's mainly because the AI uses HDR and really fits the colors correctly. It lets the HDR colors really shine and makes the whole scene look incredible. But now, if we look at some of the clips, let's actually generate some ourselves inside the tool. So when you first log into the tool, this is the home page you'll get met with. And instantly, what comes to mind is just how different and cool it looks compared to other generators. To begin, you just click this little plus button, which opens up a new prompt window. And as you can see, this is your workflow. I'll quickly talk you through some of the settings settings. Down in the bottom left, you've got the option to upload images. Then you can also ask for suggestions, and when I open this up, you can see all these different style pre-selections, lighting, camera angles, and different shots. Definitely a lot to choose from. Then of course, you've got the option to select a bunch of different settings. If you click right here, you can toggle between images and videos. We're focusing on videos, of course. Then you can select resolutions. You can go vertical, 3x4, or even as wide as 21x9, which is that really cinematic effect. You've also got resolution options options, with the highest being 1080p. Then you can choose models, pick how many videos you want to generate, set the time, and then of course the dynamic range. You've also got the option to use keyframes, which basically means you can set a starting and an ending frame with the same settings applied. And that's about it for the interface. So let's actually start with a keyframe example. Here I'll go with this short where we zoom out from a drone shot into this overview of the whole planet. So I'll upload this image here of a forest and then this image of Earth. And then for the prompt, I'll write, camera starts with a sweeping aerial shot above a dense green forest. Sunlight filters through the treetops. Slowly the camera rises higher and higher. The forest shrinks into a vast landscape with rivers, fields, and mountains. As the altitude increases, the clouds drift beneath the lens. The Arctic becomes visible. The camera seamlessly transitions into a breathtaking wide shot of Earth from the edge of space with a deep blue atmosphere fading into the darkness. Then I'll just click generate and let's look at the result. And as you can see, it came out looking really cool. The effect is great and the way the camera flows between the two keyframes looks extremely realistic. It gives off this very cinematic effect that's just super nice to look at. Now let's generate one from just a basic prompt. Here I'll go with a fisherman sits on the edge of a wooden dock reeling in his line. Fireflies blink across the water. The camera drifts from behind his shoulder, framing the setting sun melting into deep orange and purple hues across a rippling lake. Wide lens, steady shot, natural colors with glowing highlights. For this one, I'll select HDR and hit generate. And as you can see, the colors look amazing. The man himself looks really natural and the movement of the man looks really good. Overall, it just feels like a high quality shot. And for the final prompt, I'll go with this. A man opens a window in a small apartment at sunrise. Soft golden light spills across the dust floating in the air, illuminating half-packed boxes stacked in the corner. The camera slowly pushes in from the hallway, catching the gentle breeze that ruffles the curtains. Naturalistic tones, warm lighting with deep Deep shadows shot in 35 millimeter handheld. Here again, I'll go with HDR and hit generate. And once again, the realism in the video really shows. The whole scene is presented very well and the atmosphere feels great, although I think the video cuts a bit too soon, so the pacing could be quicker. In my opinion, this really looks like some generations from Google Video, but with much better colors. The overall camera flow and the character's movement are very impressive. So yeah, after testing all of this, I think it's pretty clear that Ray 3 is a huge step up from anything Luma AI has done before. Before. The HDR alone just completely changes how these videos look. It makes them feel alive with brighter highlights, deeper shadows, and details that honestly make you forget this is even AI generated. Add to that the ability to turn old clips into HDR, the keyframes for more control, the improved prompt following, and even just the fact that you can now run longer clips without breaking quality. It all just makes the whole tool so much more powerful and efficient to use. And what I really like is how it isn't just for one type of creator. If you're into making cinematic edits, the HDR 
HDR and wide formats give you that pro-level look. If you're a content creator posting on Instagram, you can do vertical or looping shots that look super clean. And if you just want to experiment and have fun with ideas, the improved prompt adherence makes it way easier to get something that actually looks like what you had in your head. So honestly, whatever type of video you're making, Ray 3 just gives you way more control, better realism, and higher quality results than before. And I think that's why this update is not just about adding new features, it's about making the whole process smoother and the outputs way more usable. If you want to try it out for yourself, I'll leave a link down in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.